Okay, do we want to start? Starting it from the beginning. So how did you come up with the concept of optical illusions for a museum? Mm, five years ago, we were traveling through, um, we, we t- took a break from everything. We had three kids by that time. And we went to um, Japan, New Zealand and Australia for traveling for three months. And then we went to New Zealand, to Wanaka in the south. And um, it was a rainy day and we didn't know what to do in the camper van. And we found this puzzling world uh, went there and we didn't have an idea what it is about. And then we were first time confronted with optical illusions. And we had such a great time there. We met another German couple there and we uh, spent the t- time with them. And it was a really fun day. And so a few years later, Matt was like, ah, we should do this in, in, in Switzerland. And I'm like, uh-huh, what? Yeah, you know, the puzzling world. Um, uh, puzzling, yeah, puzzling world. I'm like, what a good idea. Why did it take you three years to come up with this? Yeah, I was thinking long time about it. I'm like, yeah, you're Swiss. It takes a little bit longer. <laughs> <laughs> I'm German. I'm always a little bit quicker. <laughs> okay. And I, um, by that time, I wanted to become a teacher. Mm-hmm. I studied after the third child. Mm-hmm. Um and then I said, yeah, but you need me. I need you for doing it now. I, I become a teacher, so no time for doing this. And so while Matt said, why should uh, we should start this project now? And I'm like, yeah, super, good idea. And then it came all together. I mean, we, we were looking for locations for really many months. And then Matt, my, my husband, found then this one cool location. And we were really fighting for this for like eight or nine months. So after like eight, nine months, they said, yeah, you can have it. And we're like, yeah, we need to start. <laughs> and then we found this agency uh, through friends, um, who, which is really capable of doing the brand, doing the architecture, doing the, the construction. Because, I mean, we as a couple, we have never done that. That I was an uh, event manager and met as a consulting, um, strategy consulting um, person. So he's from the finance side, I'm from the marketing side. Oh. Yeah, but we, I mean, we have never done this. So it, um, so we needed an agency with a good background. And the Aroma, the agency, they, they're building, for example, the ZKB on the Landivisen, where always the theater spectacle is as well our agency was doing the same or they do the Zurich Film Festival for example yeah, so our yeah. agency is really like event um, company and they they know how to do things and they, they're good in things and they're very known and very, very high regarded so we went to them talked to them we're like yeah but we're not a company you know we don't have this big budget and but they like the project so much that they said okay let's see what how we can fit it together Oh, wow. Everything came like a mosaic together, you know, and then we never <laughs> got a big barrier that somebody would stop it. So we just continued doing it. And then finally we did it. And, and now we're still overwhelmed because we don't have a clue how to lead a museum, to be honest, you know. Mm-hmm. So. Mm-hmm. Now I, uh, with all the, event, um, all the events coming in, I'm like, wow. I didn't employ somebody yet because of Corona. I was afraid to employ somebody. We didn't know how it would start. So um, now I'm I'm looking for people. I, I need uh, people. Uh, otherwise, I will. <laughs> yeah. So how long did it take to install or complete the construction? And I mean, the, the concept, we started one and a half years ago with the agency. Mm-hmm. And the construction started end of January. Mm-hmm. Okay. So we would have opened at 1st of April, but then Corona came. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But so it was like half a year now with Corona. Mm. And which one would you think the toughest installation? Because they all involve mirrors and lights. 
um, the toughest installation was more or less the um, the maze which you see at the beginning mm -hmm. and the the aims in the basement I think didn't fit in this in the building anymore and we were turning it and then trying it because it's so high and so long um, so it, we we could the the agency skipped it already and ah. said we cannot fix it and I'm like no we need to have that room otherwise we're not going to do this. And that was like two months or one month before starting construction. And the maze, for example, is just there because we couldn't fit something else in there. But mm. the maze is much more cooler what, what we built, uh, what we wanted to do. How long did it take for the infinity room to construct? I, find, I found it really interesting. Do you know that, Matt? How long did it take to build the... Um... To build it? Yeah. Or to design it? I mean, it's a prototype, you know, mm -hmm. so we have, there was a little model where they tried it, but it was not realistically the same because with the distances, you cannot try out how the, um, the lights will get mirrored again. Yeah. Um, I it's think it's the thickness of the mirrors. Which is yeah, yeah. And the thickness of the mirrors, because they're so thick, they're six centimeters thick. And the, and the other thing is the programming in the, the program. They basically designed a, a, a program to... to um, it would be great what? if you can also join. Yeah, he needs to put the baby to bed. <laughs> <laughs> the stroller. Uh, the, the, there was no program who already, uh, which already would do the, the, the simulations. So they were for weeks sitting in this little thing. And that was the most challenging thing. But then, and so there's one company who put the the mirrors there, and there's the one agency who did the programming of the lights. Oh, okay. Did you already have uh, these names in your mind when you came up with the idea of the museum, or Aroma really put the right spice into the project to make it really cool? I mean. <laughs> But it was a ping pong game, you know, they had an idea, we had an idea, and they're like, duck, 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 and sometimes, duck, 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 So we had a lot of fights as well with them. <laughs> but very creative um, things, and, and that yeah. was cool. Tell us about the color scheme. Is there any special reason that you chose uh, red and white? Yeah, I I wanted to have. I mean, I'm coming from marketing, so I know more or less the the, the meaning of colors, and um, so I wanted to have either the Swissness in there for mm -hmm. the tourists, as well, or or the Zurich, so blue white. I wanted to have as well, and we want to have bright colors. Um, I I know that the red white is really like the kind of fancy and very eye catching eye-catching thing yeah and more blue would be more understatement and I think understatement wouldn't fit in there <laughs> and what about the name so did you did a lot of research on on uh, names and then I passed that on to the um, um, agency and they make then an analysis and said um, we would um, they had two proposals <laughs> and then when we saw the the installation the foyer installation uh, where it said, wow, and then in the mirror it says, mom. Yes. Uh, yeah, that's my concept. <laughs> <laughs> Being a mother of four, having the wow mom uh, everywhere. That's a really subtle statement. Yeah, and I powerful. think so. <laughs> no, and then, I mean, the wow you can mirror in every direction. That's so cool, what I like. So that was the, that the wow is an illusion by itself. And yeah. it's really a statement, but that, that was my concern. I said to the agency, you know, wow is a statement. How do we want to fulfill the statement? And, mm -hmm. and then they were like, that's what we will do. Everything mm -hmm. needs to be wow. Like, okay, wow. <laughs> Good <laughs> luck. <laughs> and, uh, but I think they made it, <laughs> to be honest. So. Yeah. During our visit to the museum, I saw an illusion with the completely red stripes. And yeah. there was this this uh, description that it was used the in Volva. Yeah, so there was the boats um, in World War One, and then uh, sometimes in World War Two, um, but more in World War One, um, they did the um, the coloring of um, of the boats 
in this razzle dazzle uh, patterns to confuse the um, the um, enemies so that the enemies didn't know in which direction how fast the boat goes so they couldn't um hit them in the right moment so oh. it was to irritate them it was not for tarning it was to irritate the enemy oh, okay uh, not camouflage but i never heard of octopus. yeah no but if you google it you will find the boats um You will find the boats. Oh, okay. Cool. <laughs> nice, yeah. And um, the the other fascinating part, along with the illusions, was the digital integration. You have barcodes to every each room, and with your mobile, you can take pictures, you can take GIFs, yeah. or you can just uh, read the description of the illusion. That was actually, uh, to me, the icing on the cake. Mm -hmm. I really enjoyed that experience. How did you come up with this idea? Um, that was a bit um, a ping pong game as well, because we're like, oh, but how do people take pictures when you come alone? Like when you have, you're a business traveler and you're at the main station and you still have time to go yeah. to the airport, for example. You go, and then you're like, oh, what to do? Oh, go, let's go to the wow. But then you're alone and then you can't take pictures. Yeah, and you're yeah. like, uh, so okay, we need to have photo stations. Um, and then we were like, the agency came up as well, because I mean, the agency always thinks in the future as well. And they're like, mm. oh, but we should have more digital interaction. And we're like, ah, digital interactions, um, <laughs> again, this. <laughs> and then um, and the, the technique, you never know if you can trust it and blah. And um, then we were like, no, and that was the same agency as who did the programming for the all the lamps. So they are behind all this digital interaction. Um, because, for example, if there is something wrong, the system will learn to to um, rescue itself. Oh, that's so right. We, thought, we were testing all kinds of possibilities how people could connect to the museum. And we didn't want to do it like, that you f need to download an app or something it should be easy you shouldn't be um you should shouldn't feel bad about connecting to the museum you know mm -hmm. you don't want to get catched and then oh you need to sign something and those kind of things we didn't want to have so it should be easy and and reliable and everything so they came up with this qr codes And then we said, oh, yeah, QR codes you can design in a nice way as well. So let's play with this a little bit. And it, um, then with the Corona, it got more popular, funnily, because <laughs> now the menus are on, uh, yeah. on QR codes as well. And, and some people are really easy. And, and some people are like... Hmm. Yeah, exactly. Not so fast or not so... Uh, equipped with the technology. Yeah, yeah exactly. It's a, it's a matter of generation as well, I think. <laughs> <laughs> the young generation does it easily. But it's it's really a future thinking. I love the idea and it is very much needed. So the last few months have been really challenging because of the pandemic. Yeah. And you also mentioned that you the earlier release was slated for April, but it got postponed to June. Were there any other challenges in uh, starting up the museum because of Corona? Relatively early on, we, we realized that we probably wouldn't be able to open on the 1st of April because, because of the, the lights, which mainly come from, from China, mm -hmm. was, uh, so 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 there were some concerns that they wouldn't be there in time so so actually they they were in europe okay eventually we we knew that and then uh but but we didn't know where <laughs> so so that was a challenge but eventually i think they that wouldn't have been the problem mm -hmm. but the next then was all the tubes in the maze they came from italy oh so, so another hot spot in, in Corona, yes. uh, and and that was a concern. And then at the end, it really was the the guys with the, who built the mirror in the foyer, because mm -hmm. uh, uh, they they couldn't get uh, across the border because they they were like a, 
uh, 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 specialists. So they they are actually doing this all over the world. These kind of uh, uh, mirrors, and and they couldn't cross the border for for quite a long time, which which sort of delayed everything as well. So how long did you have to wait for them to arrive? No, they only could come back to to Switzerland when the borders got opened. So that was. Yeah. But they tried earlier on, they tried twice to get across the border. And mm -hmm. first it was... They didn't let them through. First it was Germany who didn't let them out. Then it was Switzerland who didn't let them in. <laughs> and, and, and then, yes. Yes. Because that was like two weeks before the opening. There was uh -oh. nothing done in the foyer. That was the biggest problem. And, and wow. I mean, because nothing, the wow logo, nothing could have been done there. Because of the mirrors, because it's not a mirror, it's a foil. And um, they um, steamed this foil to get flat. And oh. then they put it on aluminium frames. Okay. And then they put it up. So that's, I always say it's our first big illusion is this uh, foyer because you think it's normal mirror. Yeah. But it's not. It's foil. Wow. I could not have imagined it because the foil was really like aluminium foil. It was like, hey, how do you want to put that up there? And then I was so amazed about it. Yes. And um, the the but the company who does it is uh, the same who did the um, modern Tate in London, and he has that as well. There's the same mirror, so I, we were kind of proud to see that. Oh wow, we have the same mirrors like the <laughs> modern uh, Tate Modern. <laughs> So yeah. How has the response? I know the response is really incredible, but uh, what kind of crowd do you see the most at the museum? Is it the corporate or is it the friends? No, not no. not yet the corporates. The corporates will come. They are asking for events now. No, it's uh, at the moment it's the young people. I think um, it's from the Instagram and Facebook, um, like a lot of families and a lot of Instagram people. I think the cool thing is that we. What we made is that now people come to a museum and you can fight about is, is, a, is it a real museum or not. There's this one review about um, on, on the Google, it's not a museum. No, it's more than a museum. Yeah. But what is a museum nowadays? I mean, um, but there are so many people now who come to this place who would never go to a museum. You see it in their face. They, they don't go to a museum. But now <clears throat> they can say we have been to a museum and mm. maybe we, um, we take the barrier of going to the next museum because in Switzerland there's so many cool museums. Uh. And, and so we wanted to be a kind of a door opener for, for them, you know, because um, like my kids, they always ask, can we go to a museum? Can we go to a museum? Because they only know the cool museums and they think every museum is cool. Mm. When I was a child, all the museums were boring. So I think it's cool that they now get to know cool museums. <laughs> and there's really a lot of young people who come there to, to have fun. But yeah. you always learn something as well. And I think even if you learn to communicate again and, and to philosoph with your friend about it and to, mm. to think about things in a different way. And yeah, I, I think you definitely learn something. Yes, definitely. Upstairs in the gallery, the one with the dots, there's um, the four backgrounds, four different backgrounds, and the, um, the gray thingies which you can slide over. Yes, yes. Yeah. Circles, yes. And I mean, that's, if you, you compare the gray dots in the middle, they look all different. They look violet or gray, mm. green. Mm. And then you put the gray slides over it, and then you see, oh no, it's gray. <laughs> oh, they're all the same. Yeah, yeah. they are all the same. Yeah, and the, uh, that's my favorite one because it's like it's the background who which matters. That's yeah. why we see things different. So you and me and my husband and everybody has different backgrounds, fam um, different fam families, different cultures, different backgrounds. Yes, but. Yeah. And we see things differently because of our backgrounds, but we are all the same. And it's a really beautiful way to put it. We are all the same, just with different backgrounds. 
Yeah, and there's more. I mean, the Boucher's uh, Boucher chair in the um, in the in the entry in the foyer, the mm. chair which is only one perspective is the right one. Mm. Okay, mm. put everybody in one perspective, then everybody will understand this perspective. Mm. But everybody is usually looking from different sides of the things, from different perspectives. So that's why everybody has an own opinion. And, and they don't have an understanding with each other and often misunderstandings. But if you put them in the right perspective, everybody in the same, they will understand the, each other. Yeah, true. And since you mentioned the reviews, so how are you coping up with all this uh, negative or not so helping reviews? It's a bit frustrating, to be honest. Because, <laughs> mm. I mean, we're fighting hard to... Um, to to really put something cool on there and there's this one reviewed it's not a museum and it's not corona consistent okay we didn't expect that so many people would come in the first two days um and if you're very corona afraid of then you maybe shouldn't come to those kind of places but there would be masks there would be hand gloves there would be um, um there's infection everywhere you know mm -hmm. i mean and it's not that you're not allowed to meet people anymore. So uh, this criticism and giving us only two stars, which p now puts all the five stars away, it's a little bit, <sighs> it's no right and wrong. I think what makes it really difficult is, uh, I, I think we're currently at a point in, in the corona crisis where some people, they don't care anymore. And then there you got the other uh minority which is really sensitive still about the topic and and if you put those two kind of people uh, in the same room it it creates a problem really which is hard to manage mm. okay and then the i mean you saw the building some, it's not some a people huge building. they don't they don't care about social distancing anymore because for them it's over Right. Yeah, exactly. There are actually two different uh, sections of people yeah. who believe in social distancing and one who doesn't actually care. Yeah, yeah, exactly. There's mistakes which happen and then we can yeah. um, work on that and then feedback is always required and super yeah. helpful. And I I know this, this is just one last question. Mm -hmm. You both are parents to a to four kids and it must be really tough for managing the work at the site and also work at home. How are you both uh, trying to mingle these two worlds together? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it's just happening. Um, we're working at night, you know, during the day we try to be there for the kids and then in the night we're working late. It's a, it's a really like spread. And now since two weeks we have a nanny because we couldn't cope anymore. Uh, so so now um, we have a uh, help now. So it's good. <laughs> Otherwise it wouldn't work anymore. I think. Yeah, I mean, it's you know, like the corona it was the worst because we did the homeschooling all the time. So yeah. I had the little baby on the breast, um, ha uh, having discussions here with the um, with uh, writing emails or phone calls with the with the project leader, and then having the kids beside me doing the house uh, homework. It was like absolutely crazy. <laughs> yes. It's the passion. Then my, my photographer, my Instagram photo uh, guy who does our Instagram said, Vanessa, you're the most resilient person I've ever met in my whole, entire life. <laughs> That's what I was like. <laughs> He's older. Uh, so I'm like, okay, thank you. <laughs> that really shows too, because I guess it's the passion that uh, drove you to this extent. Even yeah. I know it's really tough with uh, homeschooling and also working for the museum. I think you are really amazing, and the person who said you are resilient is really, really correct in saying that. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> very kind of you. Yeah, very. Uh, thank you so much. It was really great talking to you and Matthias. Even though yeah, Matthias yeah. only popped up once in a while. That uh, <laughs> that actually gave us the natural outlook for the entire interview. Yeah. 
Thank bye, you. Bye, bye. 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 Bye